the Agile brand. Welcome to Season 6 of the Agile Brand, where we discuss marketing technology and customer experience trends, insights, and ideas with enterprise and technology platform leaders. We focus on the people, processes, data, and platforms that make brands successful, scalable, customer-focused, and sustainable. This is what makes an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advising Fortune 1000 brands on MarTech, marketing operations, and CX, best-selling author and speaker. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full-stack technology services, talent services, and real-world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. Before we get started, I wanted to make sure you know about my internationally best-selling book, House of the Customer. In it, I walk through practical steps of how brands can build the one-to-one, personalized, omni-channel customer experience we talk about a lot on this show, and discuss ways to make incremental steps toward this goal. Don't just take my word for it. Destination CRM called it required reading, and I'm sure you'll agree. You can find House of the Customer on Amazon or learn more on my website, gregkillstrom.com. Now let's get on to the show. It's increasingly clear that businesses that invest in their employees to achieve great employee experience are investing in their own future. To achieve this, inclusion across the organization, programs for professional development, and opportunities for employees to pursue their passion and purpose are critical for businesses. Today, we're going to talk about how leading organizations need to think about diversity and inclusion as a competitive advantage, as well as a benefit to all involved. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Joanne Domerson, Global Head of Human Resources at John Deere. Joanne, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you so much to you and your audience for having me here. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this uh, topic with you. Definitely, definitely timely and, and really important. Why don't we start with you giving a little background on yourself as well as what you're currently doing at John Deere? No, great. I'll probably take you back to two and a half years ago. So I've been with the company two and a half years. And before coming to Deere in 2021, I was actually a trial lawyer in labor and employment, um, having spent many years in private practice, then going in-house as a leader in global legal teams for another large company. And, you know, I spent probably the better part of 10 years leading in that space. And I truly didn't see myself going into any career outside of law, let alone in the global recruiting or the DEI space. So um, in 2020, that all changed after some chance conversations with several senior executives um, at John Deere. And, you know, interestingly, Deere was looking for someone with an outside perspective, emphatic ambition to recruit more diverse talent into the organization at the time, and more specifically, someone who could, um, if you will, push the envelope in attracting those who would be contributing to our company's higher purpose, right, in providing food, fuel, fiber, and infrastructure needed to support a global population that is increasingly um, growing, as as you know. And, you know, Deere's passion for these efforts, I got to tell you, was really undeniable. And, you know, knowing for me at the time that I'd have this opportunity to make a real impact at the organization is truly what spoke to me at the time. And, I decided to, you know, like I like to coin it, take a leap of faith um, shortly thereafter. And, you know, as you can see, you know, as you can think through this recruiting, developing the right combination of people really became super imperative to our strategy and really became the core of our values, right? So that was really precisely my job, making sure that we had this broad representation of different, um, different backgrounds and perspectives into the room to drive unique solutions for for our customers. So I did this for about two and a half years at the enterprise. And currently, I hold an expanded role in the organization leading, you know, to, to your point, HR for the chief financial officer, the chief people officer functions, and then also leading you know, people transformation, HR compliance and policy. So it truly has been an exciting journey with an exciting company over the last two and a half years. Yeah, that's great. And definitely, yeah, sounds sounds like there's some 
re related, but you know, a, a lot of different things that you're able to contribute to and, and, and everything, you know, I, I'm wondering, you know, what's um, with, with these things in your purview, you know, what's the most challenging aspect of your job? You know, what, what keeps you up at night and, and how do you address that? Really great question. So, you know, for me, continuing to focus on our employee well-being is really at the forefront of my mind, Greg, every single day, right? So when you think about the events of the last few years with the impact of you know, COVID across the country, and in particular in manufacturing operations, right? The, the personal and professional stressors that have ensued, really, they're real, right? So yeah. ensuring that you know, our employees have a good understanding of, you know, the benefits that we provide, the services that are available has been critically important and, and truly shining a light on future facing well-being strategies that we need to continue to learn from other benchmark companies, which is something that we do quite often so that we can deploy those and can stay ahead of the curve is critical. And it's, it's really paramount. Because I got to tell you what I really appreciate having been, you know, a dear um, over the last two years is that our employees are truly core to who we are and how we operate and they really form our most valuable asset, right? So that, that intense focus on well-being then and then now and into the future, particularly as we are you know, I don't like to call it we're completely out of COVID, but at least COVID isn't a back burner. Right. But the right. other pressures and stressors, right, that face folks on a day to day basis really make this a critical component that I have to continually drive and strive for. Yeah. And so with that, you know, the you know, you mentioned the competitive pressures, certainly there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure to keep and retain and attract um, talent. There's also, you know, um, given that employees and, and the, the team members are, are such a valuable asset to the, to the company, you know, all of this kind of drives towards, you need a great employee experience to mm -hmm. do all, all of the above really. So, you know, what, what would you say some of the factors that create that great employee experience are? You know, from, from my vintage point, when employees, feel seen, you know, feel heard, valued, and are truly empowered, they will organically, in my view, be more engaged and be happier stakeholders at work. I, I have a fundamental belief in that, right? And a part of that is really giving all employees, not just the leadership group, but all employees a seat at the table in a voice at the table. And to me, that's really the essence of inclusion, right? Making sure that they have that voice and that that voice is not only heard, but there is action behind their, their contributions. Yeah. Because when they see that, then it really shores up the experience, right? And, and I really believe that employees will bring their best selves to work when they do feel that sense of value. So if you truly foster this, foster this culture of inclusion that's driven by action, it truly organically results in higher performance, higher productivity, and higher engagement, right? In an organization like ours, which is, you know, a, a, a profit, you know, profit company, you're always thinking about performance, productivity, and engagement. But I'm a big believer in that, you know, if my employees are not engaged, if they don't feel valued, then you're losing out on what the output potentially can be. So that's a really important component and probably one of the more critical components, if you will, of, of creating this great employee experience um, as, you, as you've coined it. Yeah, definitely. You know, and uh, definitely the engaged employees. I mean, not only do they create a better environment for other employees, they it, it helps with the customer experience as well. We're we're not going to talk as much about that today, but you know, there's there's some pretty there's some pretty key relationships between those things, which benefits everybody as well. But you know, okay. kind of going going back to the the inclusion part, and you know, I've certainly seen this 
in my own work and, you know, working with teams and, and at some, some very large organizations and, and different, um, different types of work, diversity of backgrounds, perspectives, ideas, you know, definitely it, it can lead to greater innovation. And, you know, again, I've, I've seen this in my own work, but can you elaborate on this and maybe why does it work this, this way? And can you give a few examples? Yeah, you're, you're spot on true, true believer in, you know, the correlation, right. Between, between that and, in leading to, to deeper innovation, innovations for, for an organization. So uh, our background and our experiences really inform the way that we approach problems, right. Taking, you know, information and, and truly come up with, with solutions. And, you know, I've seen it, I've experienced it to your point, in, in my work um, over the years, having worked in, in the corporate world for several years, um, leading teams, diversity within teams leads to more creativity. It, it just does. And a broader approach to work, right? You don't have a one size fits all approach um, and you're able to look at problems and solutions from, I like to call it a 360 degree angle, if you will, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and there are, to your point, countless studies, right? We can't even, I mean, I can't even tell you how many there are that show how diverse companies that operate at a faster, you know, operate at a faster pace with higher profit margins. They they just do. And for a global organization like ours, that's truly focused on solving today's challenges, right? And, And anticipating tomorrow's needs from our own diverse customer base, it's super critical that we have the broadest possible representation within our teams to successfully do so. So, you know, for your listeners out there who are, who aren't too familiar, you know, John Deere has a long legacy of innovation to help farmers achieve the best possible outcomes on, you know, every pass of a machine over the field, you know, improving results in minimizing variability. That is really core to our innovative prowess and to truly build this innovative, you know, um, solution mindset. We recognize that we can continuously need to expand our external talent expertise so that we can complement our ever dynamic workforce. And that's something that we're very proud of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so there's probably a lot of different ways that this can be done, but you know, where where's where are maybe one or two ways that organizations can start to incorporate some of these more diverse perspectives and ideas to to drive innovation in, in their orgs? For organizations like ours, you know, I think it's important to employ you know, a workforce that reflects the the global diversity of our communities, the blo- global diversity of our customer base, so on and so forth. And when you think about it, so that really means reflect being reflective of the the global population, right? If you are a global organization, you should be able to see representation of the world within your employee base. Right. So yeah. inclusive leadership and employee engagement, which we talked about a little bit earlier in all facets of how the company operates, then becomes even more crucial. Right. And, and that allows employees to know where they stand, that they feel you know safe to, to challenge the status quo or offer a different or innovative solution that 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 no one had thought about before you know truly listening to and embracing diversity of perspective really really builds trust with employees and i believe creates stronger relationships promotes high performance and pro- promotes the the legacy building and the loyalty that you know, large organizations, right, want to be able to see tethered within their employee base. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to a sponsor of the show, Partner Hero. Customer service outsourcing has long been available mainly to large enterprise businesses with long-term contracts and onerous procurement processes. 
Partner Hero is challenging business as usual and bringing the benefits of outsourcing to small and medium businesses as well as startups. With short, flexible contracts and fast ramp up times, Partner Hero is making customer support outsourcing a viable option for small and medium businesses and startups. It's perfect for companies with seasonality expecting a temporary spike in volume or that simply need to scale up. And their focus on quality means your customers will get an experience that feels like it comes from your team. If you're ready to bring in outside customer support help for your company that feels like it's part of your existing team, check out Partner Hero. Head on over to partnerhero.com slash agile, that's partnerhero.com slash A-G-I-L-E, to book a free consultation with their solutions team. Mention you heard about Partner Hero from the Agile brand and the way of the setup fee. Before we get back to the show, I just wanted to remind you to hit the follow or subscribe button on your app to make sure you get notified when new episodes of the show are available. Now let's get back to the show. You touched on this a little bit, you know, as far as, you know, a lot of people know the John Deere name, probably mm-hmm. can even visualize the logo, at least <laughs> I can, um, yeah. it, you know, when you close your eyes, but, uh, you know, they, they may not be fam- as familiar with, um, you know, some of the innovative technology that, that you mentioned um, a little mm-hmm. bit ago. So, you know, how do you work to educate potential employees about this? Because, you know, just to be, you're you're not just competing with direct competitors for you know potential team members. You're competing with Silicon Valley technology companies and all you know yeah. it kind of runs the gamut, right? So, you know, how do you how do you educate potential employees about this while you know kind of ensuring that you get the right combination of of diversity to to drive some of the things we previously discussed? Yeah, um, Greg, that's that's an excellent question. I actually you know, came into the organization with this very, very um, edict in mind, right? How how do we really expand our our brand beyond the the borders, right? Where where we operate. So you know, just a, a, maybe a tidbit of a background. So Deer traditionally is you know 187 year old organization, one of the one of the 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 more seasoned, the most seasoned. Um, brands in in the country and is a very, very modest company in how it shows up externally. That's been core to how it has operated for, you know, nearly 200 years and very clearly is extremely well known in the agricultural sector and, you know, your construction and infrastructure communities as well. But it, it became incredibly and readily clear to us that to continue to attract, to your point, the broadest pool of top-notch talent, we really needed to expand our brand externally. So you will see us probably more so now than we have ever in the past. You'll see us on social media platforms, you know, showcasing our technology prowess on, on, um, on YouTube, right? And invite you to go on our page there, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and other, you know, such platforms, you know, showcasing the innovative capabilities that we have with, you know, our autonomous tractors, our CN spray combines. I mean, it's amazing what we bring to to the table. And, and, and that is why we are a global leader in those spaces, right? And we're also speaking the language of our current and future talent and very critically technology talent, right? This future, the, the futuristic talent that we're going after, right? We're showcasing machine learning capabilities, robotics, autonomous capabilities at tech conferences. Um, we're at the CES conference, you know, over the last couple of years, we're keynote speakers there. All of this is really meant to show right we bring to the table and what it is that our technology does, right? To to enable us to to help our customers in meaningful ways. And, but but we also made a huge decision a, a few years ago, two two to three years ago to actually go where the talent is, Greg. So we now have a real presence in places like Chicago, Austin, you know, Bangalore, India. You know, we are in in, in various spaces in California, you know, markets that are truly rich in, in, you know, the, the tech talent, 
um, the pool of the future that we're looking for while continuing to remain very much committed to the communities where we've operated for decades, right? So it's it became very clear that you know, facing, you know, having an external facing opportunity to go where the brand needs to be, the talent of the future needs to be, became a critical component, right, of how we had to strategically uh, get ourselves to, to educate what the future employee base could, could look like. And we've really shored that up over the last couple of years. Yeah, and so to do that and and to do it well means uh, you need some measures of of success, right? It's like, mm-hmm. what are we? You know, it sounds like at a at an aspirational level, there's you know, there's certainly one thing, but you know, in in actually putting metrics to that and and things, yep. how do you how do you look at that? You know, how do you measure success in in building a great team and and mm-hmm. even to help you know where to go directionally? Great question. Great question. So, you know, I'll, I'll talk about a, a few things. So we we truly measure the impact of our, our DI strategy, our talent strategy. Um, and by talent, I mean, not just talent attraction, right, but talent development as well through, you know, the employee experience survey results, right, that we're, we're very um, focused on having regular touch points, right, and getting to understand what the true employee experience is within the organization and having, you know, recurring pulse surveys right in between. We don't want to be waiting out one or two years out to really understand what's happening and having these recurring touch points and gleaning the, the right insights from the data becomes very important, right? And we're also measuring ourselves you know, against the, the, you know, sustainability development goals from the United, United Nations, right? So that's something that we are pooling very critically based on, you know, the DI efforts in our strategy that we want to deploy. And, and we truly intend for, ultimately for accountability to be held by measuring the impacts of our actions to increase, you know, representation, opportunities, access, you know, for women and underrepresented groups in our work environments, you know, in our business relationships and in the in the communities where we operate as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, Joanne, thanks so much for for joining today. I've got a couple couple questions for you, but um, you know, one one main one, um, you know, you've given a lot of great advice already, given a lot of great insights on, you know, really what it takes to think about both diversity and inclusion, as well as building a s- successful teams. What's um, what's a next best action you'd recommend for those listening who want to do just that, you know, want to build more inclusive, diverse teams and also achieve that greater innovation? Great, great question. So, you know, here's what I would say. If, if you want to foster diversity, embrace what makes employees who they are, there are a few things that we can do, right? One of the things we can't definitely is that companies can consider creating different employee and or business resource groups, right? So whether we call, you know, you call them ERGs or BRGs in your respective spaces. You know, I really find that these groups foster this supportive and inclusive sense of community and belonging among um, employees from diverse backgrounds. And, you know, companies can also leverage these groups to provide employees with, you know, networking opportunities, you know, mentorship programs, you know, certainly continue to lean into cultural events because, you know, employees want to feel that their cultural backgrounds are also shown and valued within the organizations, developmental opportunities, opportunities to be facing with, with leadership in, in various organizations becomes key, but also it's it's important for companies to demonstrate that their employee to their employees that their voices and their contributions matter. Right. So equipping our employees with the knowledge and skill sets that they desire empowers them to be their best selves. Right. So that's where you know, we talk about, it's not just about attracting the employees, but it's also about developing our employees. Because to truly ensure that every employee 
whether you're on the production side, whether you are on the salaried side of any enterprise, a manufacturing enterprise, for example, has equitable access to career advancement opportunities, it's truly important that employees are given the tools and the skill sets needed so that they can successfully successfully perform their jobs, right? So, you know, companies can consider building, you know, robust development opportunities, programs, protocols that ensure that their employees can chart their own career paths and feel supported in their growth wherever they lead them. Yeah. And so, you know, on the on the flip side, maybe, or maybe maybe this is the inverse of of that last question is, you know, what what advice would you have? or what advice would you give to talent from diverse backgrounds on bringing themselves to work? I would give them the advice that I give to myself, right? Which is absolutely find companies whose values align with your own. I I cannot stress that enough. It will truly transform the way that you engage with the company, the way that you build a more purpose-driven and ultimately more rewarding employee experience. You know, you will be able to bring in so much of your contributions when those values are fully aligned with yours. And and that is what I found at John Deere. I am proud to bleed green, as I like (laughs) to call it, because those values are so synergetic, Greg. And... You know, there are times where, you know, folks might need to grapple with that, right? Because they might have, you know, other constraints and other concerns. But I'm hoping that by and large, at some point in someone's career, they can really take a step back and look and evaluate and assess their values with that of their companies and come to a yes. Because it really does make for a much more meaningful professional career, which ultimately, I got to tell you, Greg, leads to a much more happy um, person, (laughs) right? And even in your personal space, when you are also a a happy contributor at work. Yeah, I love it. Well, again, I'd like to thank Joanne Domarçon, Global Head of Human Resources at John Deere for joining the show. You can learn more about Joanne and John Deere by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkilstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. While you're there, check out my series of best-selling Agile Brand guides, covering a wide variety of marketing technology topics, or you can search for Greg Kilstrom on Amazon. The Agile Brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile. The Agile Brand.